Okay, number 21, the Great Pyramid of Giza was constructed as a regular pyramid with a square base. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so um, this is the formula for the volume of a pyramid. And this B is important because it stands for something. B stands for the area of the base. And it says here we have a square base. So if we have a square base, how do you find the area of a square? Well, it's the side times the side or the side squared. So that means that our formula, if, if the pyramid has a square base, not all pyramids have square bases, but this one does. So if the pyramid has a square base, our formula is one third side squared times the height. All right, so uh, what are we given here? Let's get this out the way just to make some room. Okay, so what are we given? Well, we are told that the volume is 2,592,276, and we're told that the height is 146.5. So it's just a matter of plugging in and solving. So um, let me go ahead and set this up just to make sure I have enough room. So I'm going to plug in for the volume. So the volume was 2,592,276 equals, what's that, one-third side squared. So I'm going to leave that as an unknown because I'm looking for that. And then the height is 146.5. All right, so what I'll do first is I'll divide both sides by 146.5. You might not do it this way. Um, I'm doing it this way for my students uh, because I think it will help my students. So then um, we got, so we're going to have, Two mil, what's that? Two five nine two two seven six over one hundred forty six point five. So I get uh, what's that? One seven six nine four point seven one six seven two. These numbers are just so gigantic all right so it equals one-third side squared and then now I got to get rid of that one-third so I'll multiply both sides by three and then that cancels out the one-third here and then so then it's that number times three so that's that um so let's go ahead and write that down so that was five 53,084.15 equals the side squared. And so then now I have to square root both sides. So it's going to be the square root of, of that number. So I could just do second answer, the square root of the previous answer, and then I should get my answer there. So it's about 230. 230.4, 230.4, we'll round it to the nearest tenth. All right, so it's about 230. All right, uh, the next one, uh, number 22. A quadrilateral has these vertices, and what kind of quadrilateral is it? Well, graph it. Well, doesn't look like a square to me, so it's not a square, doesn't look like a rectangle, nor does it look like a rhombus, it is a trapezoid. Just graph it and take a look. So, um, you know, maybe it might not be this easy when you get a question on your next test. So I suggest that you do memorize the properties of parallelograms and special types of parallelograms, right? So that way, if you're given something that is not as obvious, um, you can just match it up against the properties to figure out the answer. 
In the diagram below, triangle A is the image of triangle ACD after a dilation centered at the origin, blah, blah, blah. The ratio of the lengths of BE to CD is. Okay, so <clears throat> we know that these two triangles are similar. And we know they're similar because one is a dilation of the other. So <clears throat> if they are similar, let's look at the measurement of the lengths here. Um, we can observe here that the length of AD is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we can observe that the length of AE is 1, 2, 3, 4. So since the triangles are dilation of each other, we can generalize this 4 to 6 ratio. And we can now say that the triangles are in a 4 to 6 ratio. So they are in a 4 to 6 ratio. Now, a 4 to 6 ratio, if you reduce it, is 2 to 3. So the answer will be a 2 to 3 ratio. Now, all right, number 24. Line y equals 3x minus 1 is transformed by a dilation with a scale factor of 2 and centered at 3, 8. The line's image is. So two things you need to know. If the center of dilation is on the line, then you will get the same line. So let's take a look here. Is 3, 8 on this line? Well, let's see. If x is equal to 3, does y equal 8? Well, let's plug it in. Let's take 3 and we'll plug it in. Uh, 3 times 3 minus 1. What will we get for y? Well, we will get 9 minus 1, which is 8. y does equal 8. So this point, it is on that line. And I just told you that if the center of dilation is on the line, then you will get the same line. All right, now what happens if the center of dilation is on the origin? If the center of dilation is on the origin, then all you have to do is just multiply the y-intercept by the scale factor. But that's not the case here, so we're not going to do that. 